decided to remove myself quietly from the room because I kind of froze up and uh, decided that, uh, no, you know what, I, I, you know, I was too worried about what people were going to think, right? Especially. Hello, my name is Patricia Kaligs, also known as Patty Pastos Master's Journey. Welcome. And if you've been follow, following me for the last few months, I've been going through my Toastmasters pathways, speeches, and sharing them with you and adapting them, adapting them to, the Toastmaster, uh, to the YouTube world. And so I've been filling in the time in between my speeches with moments of laughter, moments of reflection, different tips and advice and toasts. And you can find them all in the playlist right here. And if you also saw my last video called Blind Date with Patty, if you've missed it, it's my best work yet. So you may want to take a look at it. But um, if you've seen that, I had such a good time interviewing those fictional characters that I made up <laughs> that I decided I need to bring in real humans on this um, channel. So I'll be inviting some champions or some Toastmasters champions that, that made it to the club level or area level, district level, even the actual world championship of public speaking, some people from my clubs, you'll get to meet all kinds of different personalities and you'll get to see their trials and tribulations with public speaking, how it all began, their trauma when they were kids. And look, the video was supposed to be 10 minutes tops. <laughs> that was my goal, but it was so good. And we kept talking and talking and it ended up taking 30 minutes. All right, I'm sorry, mea culpa. I'm going to add timestamps if ever you want to jump, um, start watching a bit, come back, so that at least you, you can save some time that way, but it was just too good. So I figured you can watch what you want to watch out of that, and I hope you get what you need to get out of this. Okay, if it's not already done, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when I'll be posting my next video. All right, let's get started. Hello, Steve Hopkinson. Trisha, how are you? Very good. How are you? Awesome, awesome. Happy to be here. Yes, I'm very happy you came here. So um, just for the, uh, the audience that doesn't know who you are, you're an award-winning speaker, you're an author, a motivational coach. I'll let you tell us more about what you do, but we met online on Facebook <laughs> because we're mm -hmm. both Toastmasters. Yep. Or we were both part of the public speaking world. So this is how, where we are. And um, I'll let you, I'm going to start with the first question. How did this public speaking journey begin for you, Steve? Well, it started back in 2006 when I decided to, to overcome my fear of public speaking. Speaking uh, was something that, as far as speaking in front of audiences, was something that I'd always had a, had a fear of, meaning that I, I did it, but I was always so nervous and so worried about what people thought. I, I've been in I've been in sales, you know, for the past 20, 25 years and was really comfortable in one on one situations, but wanted to to, you know, I, I would go to sales rallies and and see these different motivational speakers. And I, and I want honestly, I wanted to be like them. I wanted to be, have the ability to mo motivate and inspire a room like that. And uh, so in 2003 was the very first time that I decided to go to a Toastmasters meeting. And uh, as you know, in Toastmasters, they have table topics where they will encourage people to speak impromptu, which is a very quick way to develop your confidence. Uh, but it was but it was unexpected. I didn't really know, um, but I was recommended to go in and check it out. And as they were going around the table and pulling random topics out of the hat for people to speak, I decided to remove myself quietly from the room because I kind of froze up and uh, decided that, uh, no, you know what, I, I, you know, I was too worried about what people were going to think, right? Especially if I was going to have to try to come up with something on the spot. So I left, walked out of the uh, walked out of the meeting, and I didn't come back to Toastmasters for three years after that one meeting. And uh, and but still, the, the 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 fear sort of haunted me. So I, I did decide eventually to come back in two thousand and six and give it another try. Luckily for for the world. <laughs> okay, so and then. That's a, that's a, an amazing story. And yes, table topics is the nightmare of everybody that gets started with Toastmasters because <laughs> you can't control. You just have to freestyle. So awesome. Mm -hmm. And so then, 
Okay, so then then what happened afterwards, basically? So you joined Toastmasters, and then what happened from there? Well, yeah, you know, I I really, uh, you know, had to, to to struggle with with why I was, you know, you know, being held back because I felt like I had was a was a fairly competent person, but when I went back after three years in two thousand and six, uh, I I sort of had a, a a crossroads that I was at, a moment of synchronicity where I realized that if I didn't go ahead and face this fear, that I was going to be facing the, the 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 fear of public speaking for the rest of my life, and and it was and I hate being scared. So I did make that decision to to go into the Toastmasters meeting, and that for me was life changing. Uh, again, because the, w- at Toastmasters they really give you an opportunity to have like these really small speaking roles to get up in front of people and try, like the quiz master and the joke master and those types of things. And it really uh, got me started towards working on my icebreaker speech, and that in turn uh, was. You know, I, I remember rehearsing and practicing my my uh, icebreaker speech, and I wanted to do it memorized. I thought you had to memorize it. I didn't know that you could bring notes to do your first speech. So I spent about a week memorizing my icebreaker and and working on it. And and I went in and did the icebreaker uh, without without any notes. And and then of course I, I got a lot of uh, really positive feedback. I don't know how bad the speech was. <laughs> But at Toastmasters, no matter how bad it is, for the sake of growth, you're always going to hear something positive, right? There's always something to accentuate. There's opportunities for improvement and there's opportunities for growth. And it's it's not in the form of just straight out criticism. And of course, anybody who's positive and wants to move forward can grow in that environment. And so that's why it was good for me. And uh, that led to doing my third speech and my fifth speech and then my seventh speech. And then I was approached to say, hey, Steve, why don't you enter into the international speech competition? Which again, uh, you know, when Toastmasters, that's a, uh, you know, a, a contest. I mean, Toastmasters, I think, has about two hundred thousand members worldwide, like on an international scale. Has about twenty five thousand people that enter into an international speech competition every year, and uh, it and it starts at the at the club level, and then going to the area of clubs, and then to the division, and then uh, to the district level, and then at that time in Toastmasters, there was a regional level. And then there was the, the the world championships that people can, can uh, compete in. So, uh, you know, while I didn't go to the world championship of public speaking, I did have a, a really good run on my first tryout. And it really changed uh, my entire perspective about speaking in front of people and what it meant. It didn't change how I felt, but it but it did change how I approached it. Because there's, there's an old saying in Toastmasters that says um, it's OK to have butterflies as long as they're flying information. And uh, that's what uh, that's what Toastmasters part of what Toastmasters taught me. Awesome. Actually, um, now it is we had three hundred forty seven thousand members worldwide in Toastmasters. So wow. was, yeah. <laughs> last time I checked. Uh, yeah. Well, yes, we're growing. Yeah. Awesome. That's an awesome story. And um, OK, so you started a Facebook group called Speakers Momentum Academy which I'm very in the last few months. And I'm so happy that was a life changer for me, to be honest, even if I was a Toastmasters and learning what I needed to learn for structure and how to speak. And I'm still struggling with a few things, obviously, but Speakers Momentum Academy for me was, that's why I was more comfortable being myself because it's a small, small, close uh, group. Anyhow, I'll let you explain how, what it's about and also why you launched it, please. Sure. You know, I, I had after COVID, I had I, like I've also been in real estate for the for the past 10, 15 years. And during COVID, uh, some of the a lot of the speaking projects and workshops that I was doing had come to a halt. And I was not a virtual social media person at all. So this idea where everybody was like pivoting and jumping online and doing virtual speaking, I, I kind of froze. And so during COVID, I went back to what I knew which was uh, real estate, of course, because real estate continued to be an essential service. And of course, we all know what was happening in the real estate market at that time. So I I, I made a return to that, turned my license back on after being uh, absent from it for about maybe five years. Uh, You know, it was, you know, speaking projects, offline speaking projects that I had been working on in between that time. But from 2015 to 2021 or 2020, uh, if if you weren't in the real estate business, then one thing that you would have found out when you came back was that social media was the new business card. Social media was the new way for a client to verify you and, 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 and find out if you were at all credible. And, and not necessarily just in terms of promoting and putting your business card online and saying, hey, I sell real estate, but just in terms of just you know, people knowing who you are. So it, it put me again up against the same 
discomfort of, okay, well now I've got to go into social media and maybe I'm, I'm going to be making videos and, and, and letting people know who I am. How am I going to go about doing this? So I, I went uh, and, and looked around at, at what different social media influencers and business people were doing. And the biggest thing that I found was that people were never sort of directly promoting their business, but what they were talking about is what their interests were, what their values were and what inspired them. So for me to model that, I came from, you know, one of my passions, which was public speaking and inspirational speaking. So I said, you know what, I'm not going to directly promote real estate. I'm going to get out there and reintroduce some of a lot of the things that I've been talking about when I was at Toastmasters and when I was speaking and the certifications and the workshops that were, that were out there. And, uh, and then I started pushing record, but I found myself really facing the same fear as back in 2006 when I was wanting to get up and speak in front of people because I didn't know how about how what was it going to be like pressing record on my phone you know what were people going to think you know what was I going to get attacked on social media for you know for putting my ideas and my opinions out there and and I just wasn't I you know wasn't something that I was comfortable with but uh, I think it was back around May 31st um, I got comfortable pressing record and just sharing inspirational thoughts in the moment on the fly and uh, that resulted in a, in a consistency of, of posting videos every day. By the time August came, I posted over 100 videos uh, posting every day. And people were starting to ask me, you know, are you, are you really posting every day? And is that, you know, how's that, how does that work? I have a business that I'd like to be able to promote, but I'm, I'm afraid to press record. I'm afraid to, you know, get started, you know, making videos. And in my mind, by that time, it was, it had become easy. But I understood the fear that, that people were facing and more and more through it towards the end of the summer, I kept having this conversation with people where everybody had something to share, but they were camera shy. So I, it, so I had been thinking that uh, as I was uh, intending to promote real estate, but now getting into more public speaking by making these five to seven minute videos every day, uh, I, I thought maybe I should start a Facebook group where, uh, you know, people can, you know, learn, learn about public speaking. And when I had realized that the greatest challenge at that time was videos, I said, well, let's make it like a video challenge. So I opened the group and, uh, you know, and just design it with some very basic outlines, you know, three levels where people can come in, get their icebreaker, get comfortable pushing record. Doesn't matter what the video is. You're in a safe space. You're not going to be criticized just like Toastmasters. Um, you know, you're going to be looking for opportunities for, for improvement, you know, as you make your videos and it really, uh, it took off really fast because it, it it because what it did was it allowed it allowed people to trade in fear for confidence really on a, on a really fast scale where uh, Toastmasters for offline speaking which again I'm, I would always encourage anybody to take advantage of that opportunity because Toastmasters is everywhere uh, but what I what I found with for somebody who wants to be a, a social media influencer the the learning curve was so much faster. So in Toastmasters, you might do your first 10 speeches and you're booking with a club. You have maybe a club members, maybe 20 or 30 people. So the hopefully over a period of several months, you'll get that those first 10 speeches in. As we're in speakers momentum, you could get your first, you could do your 10 speeches in 10 days. And you know what I mean? Five, you know, five to seven minute videos. And what we noticed was that as people were making their videos, video three, video four, video five, on day five, day six, day seven, the confidence was going through the roof, how they presented themselves and what, and, and what they were presenting. And then even people, even like some, like, like yourself, uh, who had decided, you know, there's topics that I want to bring forth and I, and I want to have a safe space to practice those topics in and develop that confidence. And, and multiple people were having this experience. And uh, so I think the first week, I brought in 17 people to the group and by the following within the following couple of weeks, there was over 300. And uh, so not, not all of those people are active, but uh, at any given point in time, we have people that are always stepping forward saying, Hey, I, I see the videos going on. I want to be part of the, the process. I want to be part of the growth. And uh, some really amazing things are happening for people right now as a result. Yes, they are. <laughs> I actually launched a whole YouTube channel just because of your uh, speakers momentum academy so i'm i'll definitely vouch for that uh, the thing is i'm one of those people you're talking about even if i uh, well that'll be a subject for another <laughs> interview but um even if i'm comfortable now and i'm prepared, i went all in with toastmasters and i started in may actually may 2021 and i went all in and decided to overcome that fear that panic i had like the stomach cramps and perspiration, the whole thing so um, so now I, I'm comfortable with that, but the social media world, I'm 
that's a, a world I'm just not familiar with at all. And I still have that kind of panic um, of like going live and like posting videos. I still, I'm not even there yet, but now I'm becoming more and more comfortable thanks to the Speakers Momentum Academy. And um, there's one thing with knowing the structure of a speech and uh, like a, I think Toastmasters is phenomenal and it did change my life forever, but there's just different things for the social media world. We have this fear of being ridiculed or being misunderstood or being judged and, you know, what are they going to say? And it's just really important to be able to step out from that comfort zone. So that's why I welcome this kind of forum, this safe, close forum where it doesn't matter. There are a bunch of people in Toronto. <laughs> what do I care? <laughs> they can laugh at me all they want, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then I tried a few things that I would have never been able to try on my YouTube channel or forget on my own platforms. So it's just like, oh, this actually works. And you have so much engagement from people that are encouraging. Sometimes like we're trying to get, uh, we're trying to get some reactions from people outside of the, um, like in the world and the different social media platform, but people don't respond to it or they don't react. They, they all have their own psychology behind them, all those platforms. But right. in that space, we're all the same. We're just all prepared to be courageous um, or to be brave and step out from our comfort zone. So I love it so much. So thank you so much for this, uh, Steve. Absolutely. No, you're welcome. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, we don't know, especially like if you're looking at a Facebook platform, for example, we don't know how many people are really watching and, and, and until we get our comments mm -hmm. and, and the feedback. So the nice thing in, in Speakers Momentum Academy is that every, we all know that we, what we want. We want feedback and we, and we want it to be positive. And uh, that, uh, you know, and because we offer that to each other, you it's you're you're that much encouraged to make your next video and then your next video. And then all of a sudden you're like, OK, well, I need to I need to start sharing this with the world. And the learning, the, the learning curve is like it's really small. So you get in and then, you know, stay as long as you like. But we find that people are, uh, you know, jumping into their next project. Now we have right now. Now we we have people who you know they were barely able to make an icebreaker, you know, a month, a month and a half ago. And now we have another level in speakers momentum where people are doing Zoom meetings and running and actually running meetings on ideas and topics that they want to be able to introduce to the marketplace. And again, uh, doing it in a safe place where um, they can grow and sort of be in that hot seat and uh, and be able to learn. So it's uh, yeah, it's 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 been making a real difference for people. Yes, yes, it has. OK. Yes. So you mentioned before something about five to seven minute speeches, which is mainly what we do at Toastmasters. But in the Speakers Momentum Academy, what I liked about it is that it could be 30 seconds to five minutes. That's the instructions that I got initially. Yes. And maybe I'm, you know, some people are freaking out about talking for five to seven minutes, but 30 seconds, I can talk 30 seconds without making a fool of myself. <laughs> right. So the, the, the short and then it's just very, um, it's more encouraging because it's such a, a short period and we can do it on our own terms. Maybe That's some right. people prefer in the morning, some at night. So it's just very, very flexible as a platform. So. Yeah, and as you say, absolutely. You're right, Patricia. They, 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 they can do it when they want, so they don't have to wait for a meeting. You know, once a week or once every couple of weeks or whatever. You can, if you have an inspiration at three in the morning, you know, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and post a video. And the nice thing, like as you said, is that uh, it doesn't have to be a five to seven minute video. We we have a, a we like it to be a minimum of thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. So even if it your third video and you're you press record for 30 seconds and you're just like you know what i don't really know what to say but i know that uh, you know the habit is more important than the result and i just wanted to get myself out there and get past mm -hmm. the fear mm -hmm. have a good evening click and then you're done yeah. is you know what i mean and and each time that you do that trading in fear for confidence and there's no there's no uh, there's no punishment for that uh, mm -hmm. in this group so, amen <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay so most people panic, right? Uh, the, the ones that don't want to step out. I don't know how many times I spoke to somebody when I started telling them about Toastmasters and nobody knew what it was, first of all, but they, so, okay. So I tell them what it is. Oh my gosh, I could never do that. So if there's one thing you could tell these folks, the ones that panic with the idea of speaking in public or putting themselves out there, even to promote their own business, some people, some business owners are terrified, as you said, yep. to step out on the social media platform. What would you tell them as an advice right now? And I would say it's 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 all about where the focus is. Uh, you know, the reason that I would get nervous, and and I still get nervous today. Anytime that I find myself getting nervous or getting butterflies or feeling almost really uncomfortable with what's going on, the first important thing to realize is that you're never going to get rid of that. If you care about what you're doing, if you care about people, if you care about uh, you know what you're going to be putting out there, then you're always going to get a little bit of nerves. And and this happens to to the best speakers in in in, in the world. 
As I mentioned earlier, it's okay to have butterflies as long as those butterflies are flying in formation. But you're always going to be feeling that. And if you feel that, it just means that you actually care. Uh, how, but how do you deal with it and how do you manage it? And, and it's a matter of focus. What you're feeling at that point in time is all a matter of what you're focused on. So if you can recognize that uh, whatever product or service that you have or whatever messages that you have or whatever it is that you're wanting to advocate for, there's something out there that you want people to think, that you want people to feel, that you want people to do differently than when you uh, started speaking. And that has to show up in their lives somehow. So th for, for me, the key is to really imagine, you know, how do I want people's lives to be different after I'm give done giving my presentation or, or, or my message? And to imagine that in my mind and to think about how that's going to show up and how is this going to bring more esteem to their lives? Uh, how are they going to look in front of other people if they take my advice? How, how will this improve them? What are they going to be able to do that they weren't able to do before? What will they gain in their lives that they don't have now? And, and how will they enjoy life, enjoy their lives more as a result of me finished speaking? And, and, and what, so whether it's a keynote speech, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes or, or, or speaking for five to seven minutes, it's, that's, that, that becomes the focus. And the more I'm focused on that outcome and the benefit that somebody's going to be able to get in their life as a result of what I'm having to say, the less, I, the less I'm focused on myself. So there might be that little bit of nervousness in the beginning, but because of my focus, once I get started, it, it disappears now because I'm coming from service and, and, and focused on who I'm talking about. So for, for people who, are, who, who feel that, uh, it's about changing your focus and really reminding yourself it's not about me, it's about them. Oh, this is so deep. Let me write it down. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that makes a lot of sense because yeah, people, they need to hear um, like my foundational statement that I found on Speakers Momentum Academy. Actually, I, I came up with it in that platform is um, the power of your voice can change the world. Find it and mm -hmm. use it. I know it's too long, Steve. <laughs> we already had a discussion, yeah. but you know, I found it there. It's just so many people have things to say. Like they, yeah. every, we all have a story and it's just anyway i just find that it's phenomenal like if we could just get people to step out from their comfort zone and just actually start speaking that's and right. just starting with small steps doesn't have to be get on the stage and talk to two thousand people but just that's small right. just talk to a handful of people and just go from there yeah. so that's awesome and what we found is that that process is faster than you think you know once you once you get it once you surround yourself with people that are on the same mission as you as well like it's part so that's it's not just the, the videos but it's also being part of that community yes yeah. Yes, because we live in a world often where we're just, you know, worried about our own issues, our own problems, our own circumstances, but we forget we're part of a community and there are other people that went through where we're trying to get and they can actually help us get there faster. So it's just great to um, associate with like minded people. 100 percent. I mean, I did. You know, when I started making videos, even though I had a little bit of fear behind it, I've made, you know, probably close to just a couple hundred, almost a couple hundred videos this year so far. And but I did have the benefit when I started of ha having already been an offline stage speaker, running workshops and Toastmasters winning contests and that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, it was so starting on my own, even though I had my discomforts with it, I had, uh, you know, some some background training. But for the person who hasn't had any of that training, but they know they want to start being a social media influencer, again, being being in a group of people who are all starting at the same place. Because uh, the reason people are there is because they have something. They they either have a foundational message they want to create, or they want to get good at pressing record, or they just want to get comfortable in front of the camera. And it, and it's a great equalizer. So for somebody who wasn't a speaker and didn't have that training beforehand and wants a place to get started, yes, Speakers Momentum is actually you know Academy is uh, is, is is a great way to 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 get started on that. Yes, sir. Okay, so I have a, a question I have to ask you that may help out some people <laughs> sure. so because the reason why we don't want to step out um we don't want to speak or we don't want to overcome that fear of public speaking is because we're afraid of being ridiculed or um you know those horrifying moments humiliating moments that we all most of us felt yeah. when we were young and they would traumatize us yes can you share your most horrifying in all those years of public speaking your most horrifying and humiliating experience that you've lived and what is it that you did to overcome it, basically? And why are you happy that you did? Well, there's uh, man, you know what? And, and, I, and I probably haven't told this this story before, but after I went to, uh, yeah, I went to the uh, the international speech competition and I competed uh, in the, at the area or sorry, the, the, the 
club level, area level, district level, and then regional level. As so, so the levels were placed at that time. This was back in 2007. And so after winning the district title in Toronto and, and going to Rochester in New York, I placed second there, you know, one level from the, the World Championship of Public Speaking. So when I came back to Toastmasters in Toronto, um, it was an amazing time because not everybody gets that opportunity. And, and I had an opportunity to go and visit, uh, you know, all kinds of clubs, uh, you know, you know, giving my, the, the speech and doing a little bit of you know, Toastmasters training, things like that. Well, several months later, uh, Toastmasters has a humor contest, which only goes to the district level. And this was right after the, the international competition, after I'd won in Toronto and there was all this notoriety around it, I entered into the humor contest and I went into the club level and I won. I went up to the, uh, I went up to the area level and then I won that. I went up to the, the divisional level and I won that. And then I was competing in Huntsville, Ontario, I think it was in fall of 2007 for the, for the district title. Um, and this would have been potentially, you know, back to back titles for me, but I, I forgot the, I forgot the words to my speech halfway through. And I, and, and it, 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 it took a hold of me and, you know, my, my kids were in the audience, you know what I mean? My, my spouse in, at that time was in the audience, probably a couple hundred, maybe two, 300 people out there. And I forgot my words. And, and because I forgotten my words, I went into, like, I, I, I didn't recover. And I got frustrated and I walked off stage. And I can tell you that uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted to fall in a hole and I, I didn't want to be seen again, right? Um, so it was, um, it was definitely humiliating and it was, a, and it was a lesson that I had learned in, in terms of the amount of pressure that I had put, put on myself at that time. And the biggest thing for me uh, about that was I continued to compete you know, I continued to enter contests. I continued to, because I, I had to recognize that it was just a, you know, it was a one-time folly. I'd been to that mountain, so to speak, a few times already. And it was just one of those things where, you know, I, I, I didn't recover. And probably in that moment, if I had it to do over again in that moment, because this, this has happened to me before, where I just kind of lost my, my thinking, it's okay to take a pause in front of people. It's okay to stop, take a breath, gather your thoughts. You think maybe because you're not talking that everybody's going to start coming after you with a pitchfork, but people understand. And the time is actually moving a lot slower than you think that if you'll just take a moment, recompose, gather your thoughts, close your eyes if you need to. And I've done this in front of people where I just, I, I, I felt like I was lost. So I just stopped, closed my eyes, took a deep breath, and then went on and continued talking. And I actually had people come up to me afterwards and say, you know what? My, you know what the favorite part of my speech was? I could see when you lost it, but when you took the time to recompose yourself and you didn't lose it. And that and, and that's and that's what they took away from that message that I that I that I gave that day. And that made me realize that uh, you know uh, that it's that we that we don't that not everything doesn't have to be perfect in front of your audience. That sometimes these things do happen. So yeah, that's so so if I had if I had it to go back and do over again uh, that that day, then you know that's that's how I would have handled it. And that's the lesson that I learned. Uh, because, uh, you know, I remember one time when I was in, um, Las Vegas with, uh, my, my mentor, Craig Valentine and his mentor, Patricia Fripp and Patricia Fripp, uh, who she would have, she's the first, uh, female president of the national speakers association and, uh, no, and noted as one of America's most, uh, electrifying speakers and coaches today for public speaking. And, uh, she would have reminded you of a young judge, Judy, as a matter of fact. And uh, what she said was, you know, Steve, there's three kinds of speakers in this world. Those that have bombed, those that haven't bombed yet, and those that will bomb again. And, you know, that's when I realized that, you know, no matter how good we get, we all have our moments. And uh, but it's all about how you manage it, how you respond to it. And then once you have it, it's gone. People forget about it. and You move on. 100%. Tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing this with us. Uh, it's really um uh, yes, you know, in moments we, we will all have those moments, as you just said, and it's nice to, to see people because you've done so much. You've touched the lives of so many since that bombing ex experience. Uh, if you would have just let it get the best of you, you could have just put yourself in a hole, like you said, and that would have been the end of that. And then there would have been no SMA. And then I don't know if the, what followed was the book. You wrote a book and right. So yep. 
No, there's a few things that, ha yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that happened after that. I mean, I, I wound up getting into, uh, you know, coaching, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I became a certified uh, world-class speaking coach. Yeah. Um, I became a facilitator for mm -hmm. personality dimensions. Um, and, and then just a lot of the things that I'm doing in social media. So if I had allowed that moment to scare me away from public yes. speaking, uh, then yeah, there would have been a lot of different people I would met you and I wouldn't be, you know, here having this conversation right now. You know, you wouldn't be part of the academy, et cetera. So yeah, there's there's always something that um, you know that happens that can happen in our lives that could that may be the indication that okay, maybe I should quit, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. But that actually becomes your defining moment that says, you know what, there's something great. You know, if, if this was to happen, there's something greater waiting for me. So Steve Hopkinson, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. And I have one last question for you. What's next for Steve Hopkinson? Do share. <laughs> well, uh, one of the, there's a few different, a couple of different things that um, I'm working on right now. One of the, one of them is uh, I'm, I'm dabbling in some win-win cross promotion, which is, uh, you know, sort of getting out and to, to some different communities, which will allow me to, you know, put on some different events that can, that can give back uh, events that are related to some of the workshops that I was talking about earlier with personalities, public speaking, and, and, and some of my other areas of profession. And so that's been a, a, just an exploratory phase right now. And it'll, it'll get me out speaking offline again, you know, which I'm pretty excited about. And also just being in a position uh, to, uh, to, 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 be, uh, to be able to give, to be in a position to, to serve different, uh, you know, parts of the community or, or society that I, that I haven't taken a lot of time to do before, which is something that um, I've, I've, wa I've always wanted Speakers Momentum be a, be a part of. And uh, the next is, is that I'm uh, flirting right now with uh, doing a, a podcast uh, radio show. And uh, that, could, uh, that could potentially launch in the new year. And it, it comes about as a result of having, uh, you know, developed as a, as a social media influencer over the past several months. And uh, it, although I was thinking about doing a podcast, I did not think of it as being part of a, a radio show. So I'm excited about what could happen with that. So just in talks about that and seeing if that's something that I'm going to be able to take off with within the new year. So awesome. That's exciting. I'll yeah. be on the front seat watching this. <laughs> yeah. Great. And how can people reach you um, if ever they want to get in touch with you? Well, if uh, well, you can email me Steve at stevehopkinson.com. Uh, you can text me 647-569-5297. Uh, you can uh, hit me up on Facebook. Uh, if you go to startu.ca, startu.ca, that'll take you right into my feed. You can join, and uh, I've got over uh, well over a hundred videos in there that uh, that you the, the videos that I've been talking about that you can watch from that I've uh, made over the past year. And also, if you'd like to come and check out Speakers Momentum Academy, you can go to uh, speakersmomentum.com. That's uh, again, speakersmomentum.com and uh, become part of the community. You can watch as an audience member in the beginning and then, and then you know, re feel free to reach out to connect to me, uh, to just DM me. And, and if you're looking at making your icebreaker, but you have questions about that, and uh, you know, we can certainly talk from there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Steve, for being with us. And just as a little recap, um, again, this is just to show a real human <laughs> that had his struggles and his trauma with the public speaking and how he overcame all of those by stepping out from his comfort zone and being prepared to being ridiculed and being, um, you know, just trying something new in order to be able to, to reach new heights, really. So again, there's so many different forums. There's Toastmasters if you want to join as an observer. There's a Speakers Momentum Academy if you want to just get your feet wet in a very small, close, private group. And um, yeah, and who knows what, what can come out from this and what do you have to, 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 to lose by trying it out, right? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So basically, I will leave you on my foundational statement <laughs> that I care very much about. The power of your voice can change the world. Find it and use it. Until next time. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love it. That's perfect. I hope you enjoyed this interview. Give some thumbs up if you did. And leave some comments below with what resonated the most with you. Or send me some uh, a direct message on my social media platform. I always read and respond to every comment. And if you feel this could be helpful for anyone, share the love. All right. Take care of yourself and see you in the next video.
Bye-bye.